God is good. All the time. All the time. Amen. Well, I wanted to get right at it. We'll just continue. We are going to, Nick is going to bring the word today. And he really, you can, you can see him like a, um, one of those steam trains, choo, 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 building up, building up momentum as it's going. And great message. And we uh, love him. Thank God for the, the, the unique gifts that God has put in you and for this body and for this region, for this region, for all the more people that are going to come into this house. And we are blessed to have you bring the word today again and know that uh, that you, you're loaded and ready to go. And we love you. God bless you. And I love you all too. Go ahead. You're good to go, Pastor Tim. Yeah, I just want to testify that um, Nick and I went out for breakfast yesterday, and we started at seven thirty. And we finally took our last bite at nine o'clock. It was not. It was that way. It started to get cold. But uh, we just preached to one another during all that time. The man is—he's like filled up with the word of God. Uh, he would say something, and all of a sudden that would trigger something in me, and I'd just go off. And then, <laughs> then I would say something, and then he would go off. And man, you know. Uh, if we weren't sitting down at the table, man, we'd be jumping around. <laughs> you know, so, but, Amen. Amen. Yeah. But he's a fun guy to be with. And he, he is a, a, a man of the Word of God. He's filled up with the Word of God. So I um, just uh, soak it all in. And uh, this is actually part two because he could preach everything that was inside of him on the first service. So, Amen. <laughs> I'd have to stay true to that, brother. You know, because there's always more. You know, for me, you know, for me, so there's always more. You know, it's like, it's like he'll just, he'll give you a little bit, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, well, since I gave you that much, there's a whole lot more for you. Yeah. You know. And for, for me, I'm fascinated with the Word of God. Come on. You know, I, 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 I probably think about it more often than I think about anything else. When I'm busy walking out the car, I'm thinking about what I just read. Amen. You know, and it says that we should meditate in it day and night. That's right. Amen. And it's all part of renewing our minds. And we all start somewhere. And it's always the beginning. And it doesn't matter where exactly that beginning starts. We all start somewhere. And when we don't know where to start, all we have to do is ASK, ask him, and we'll know where to start. I thank you, Lord Father, for this part two, as Pastor Tim said, this second service that we were having. And I know that we're still hungry, and we're still thirsty, because it keeps on growing inside of us won't stop because you put your Holy Spirit in us. May you expand that hunger and that thirst even more so that once we get done with here, we'll want to go have more. And that may we also keep growing in your name. Starting with Romans 8, I'm going to read the first 11 verses. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life has made me free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, and that was weak in my, my flesh. 
God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh. On account of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us. Who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But for those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but you are in the Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God that dwells in you. Now if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. And if Christ is in you, your body is dead because of sin. And, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through the Spirit who is in you. In our walk with the Lord, we often have to renew our minds because we consistently have an old way of thinking. And we have to fight it every single day. And just know that we have to keep our eyes on knowing that the victory was already done. And we stay focused. But we often get distracted because of situations or circumstances or at work or it could be anywhere that you're at. Or you could just be walking down the road and all of a sudden a thought pops in your head. There it is. And what are you going to do with it? Are we going to take it captive, or are we going to just play around with it and then uh, see if we can get ourselves into some trouble, maybe hate and discontent, you know? <laughs> you know, I mean, we're, we're human, right? But that's no excuse, right? I mean, we have to take responsibility and accountability for ourselves, you know? In his word, he says that we should meditate in it day and night, his law. Now... A lot of people think, well, that's just an Old Testament quote of around Joshua 1 8. Well, let's understand what he means. He means this whole book is his law. It's a love letter, also. It's to give us instructions. It's why all scripture is given inspiration of God and is profitable for teaching, reproof and correcting and training in righteousness so that the men of God could be thoroughly equipped for every good work. So within this, we find the inspiration part meaning God read. In other words, it's something that he gave of himself. So then also, he gave of himself inside me. So that means both of them should share with one another. So does that mean that, can I have the Spirit of God live in me without having me word? Yes. But will he do anything? Will he help me grow if I don't have any word? Or is it the opposite way around? Well, if I have a whole bunch of word and I'm not doing much with him, he's just in me, am I going to grow? No. I cannot have one without the other. For he said, my word is truth. And he said, my spirit is truth. So both work with one another. Ooh, good word. And that's how we all get to grow. It's how he helps us renew our minds. It's how that we get to walk not in condemnation. It says that those who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. So what is that? Does it mean that if I sin over here, you know, or I commit this sin or that sin, does that mean I'm still in the flesh? No, he said he'd never be apart from me. That I can't be separate from him and no one can take him from me. Amen. Amen. So that means that he can help correct me. 
into being walking with him, being and living in the spirit. So through that, uh, that the fruit will keep growing and growing as he's pruning me of these fruits of darkness that I've been having, that I've been trying to get rid of. Just snip here, snip there, and all of a sudden you see all the blossoming of the great fruit of the Holy Spirit that's in you. That is continually growing. Now the question is, is can you fulfill the law without him? No, we can't. We can't fulfill the law just by being in our flesh. Because he won't be glorified by it either. Then we're counting on regular physical performance. And physical performance does us no good. But if we have a relationship and we start working it with them, walking in the spirit, and knowing that the law is a tutor to teach us what sin is, and that he's given us the power, the, you know, the gift to keep moving forward through repentance, through changing our thought process and growing. Very good. And through this, that's the reason why we have our instruction manual book, the Word of God. Because the more I think of it, the more that I the more that I keep on pondering and thinking. It says that I should ponder at the path of my feet and all my ways be established. Do not turn to the right nor to the left and keep my feet from evil. Amen. That's what it says in the Proverbs. So if I'm pondering, I'm thinking, so what am I thinking and pondering about when I'm walking? Am I thinking about Jesus and what he's done for me? Am I thinking about the word of God and what can it help me change my thought process? Or am I still thinking about simple things? Am I still willing to try to stay right on the fence? <laughs> you know, but of course, we know that there's no fence there because it's going to be a choice whether yes or no. But we're, we often get, get in the place where we think, well, maybe I should just compromise instead. <laughs> That's still saying yes or no, right? <laughs> I mean, we, we, we tend to, you know, we're saying, we walk down this road. And, you know, you see all the signs of these, you know, different types of places you can go walk into. And you have a choice on whether how you're going to accept the information. Sometimes when you, you read something, it's not information that you want. And you get the choice on whether you're going to take captive of it and toss it out, or are we going to keep thinking about it and have it roaming around in our minds and we're going into a direction of sinful nature? How can I have fulfillment? How can I have fulfillment in my walk with the Lord? Do I focus on that He is? that righteous requirement of the law fulfilled in me, knowing that he is the hope of glory, knowing that he is my everything in my walk and your walk. Amen. Then knowing that through that, I can walk in his spirit and he gave me the power to say, no, I'm not going to do this here, but I will do that here. He made me capable. I already knew I was capable of compromise and all these different types of things in my life, which I was incapable of making the right choice with the Lord because of my spiritual inability. He made, gave me a spiritual ability when I accepted Christ. Amen. And through that, he gave me so much more. But how can I get from one step to the next? It's always about our thoughts. The way that we're thinking, the way that we're, you know, keep on pondering. If it turns out that that I'm setting my mind on things that are uh, sinful or fleshly, then that's, I know what my outcome will be. It's going to be death in one way or another. And that's right. Whether, I already know that I'm going to go through a physical death. I'm talking about a spiritual death that could separate me from people that I love. 
He could separate. I mean, a sin is what kind of separates from us from God. That's right. But it's only by the blood of Jesus that we are covered and accepted by Him. That's right. And those who are led by the Spirit of God are called the sons, sons of, of God. God. That's right. Okay, so the question is, is will we keep walking with Him? I'm not saying you can, you know, lose your salvation and all that. I don't, for me, I don't believe any of that because it's not my choice because it was a choice that he paid for that I could have. So it was a gift given to me. It wasn't because, well, I did this, I did, no, I can't boast about anything. I've got nothing to boast about. I'm not God, you know. <laughs> I mean, well, just imagine it be God, be creator, you know? I mean, that, that's so huge. He made this universe and everything. It's like, wow, really? But just knowing that whatever choice we make next after that will have a ripple effect in what we do. So, well, I want to give hope. Well, I want to give life. Do I want to give love? Maybe show patience, better fruit. Are these type of the fruit that I want to show that everybody else can benefit from? And knowing that when I show these fruit, everyone else will light up like a Christmas tree. You know, at least that's what I think. <laughs> you know, I mean, you could just see when one person shows joy, it's like this automatic, like, chain reaction type deal. Everything you sow into joy is like, ha, 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 you know, next thing you know, you're just laughing, and all of a sudden, everybody else starts laughing. It's like contagious. It's the same thing when you're in the Word of God. I can't get enough of it myself. Amen. Once I get started, it's like, oh, yummy. This is like so good. It's almost like eating pizza. <laughs> you know, seriously. I mean, I just get so excited and just so just into it because it's like, wow, I get to know more about him. And I get to know more about myself because he gave me an identity. Because I'm walking with him, and he's showing me, you know what? This is how much I believe in you, and this is how much I love you. Very good. I'm thinking, wow, Lord, you really love me. And you know what? I am so in love with you. Wow. I mean, it's just amazing just to know that, that, that you have everything that you could ever hope for. And all you got to say is, yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. Have your way in. <laughs> but it, of course, we know it's just not that simple. We can say yes in one hand and then turn around and say no in the other. Because that's the way that we often think like, because we're always shifting. We're always thinking. Sometimes we do things out of just habit, out of nature. Well, he decided to do something else different. He goes, you know what? I'm going to give you a new nature, and through that, you're going to have a whole lot more of life. Very good. You're going to have a whole lot more love. <laughs> and you're going to have a whole lot more blessings that you can count right after that. <laughs> oh, really? I'm going to walk in blessing, and I can count each and every one of them. And then I can count it all joy when I go through this trial or this tribulation, because why? It's the testing of the faith that's given to me. And through that, I get to walk with him. And, oh, there's that distraction. There's that test right there. Oh, you know what? I can't see it yet, but I'm going to believe. And I'm going to walk and know that my mind is thinking about what the Lord wants me to think about. If I'm not thinking about this, then I'm surely going to wander thinking about other things. So if I'm in the... So those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Well, what about without faith? It's impossible to please Him. That's what it says. So with faith, now faith is something that has been a given gift to all human beings. Someone that doesn't believe in Jesus Christ has faith. It's a God-given gift. It's something that's put in every single human being. And they get to have a choice on where they're going to put it. And of course, 
They'll make the other choice. They won't choose Jesus until God decides to choose them first. And often, you know, we think that, well, don't, ain't I got a free will? Don't, don't I get to have a say so? Um, I'd say that the choice that was given by the price that was paid for it. So my question is, is, was it your choice in the first place, or was it God that decided to pay for the choice for you? I'd say, yeah, he paid it for me, because he decided, you know what, you're worth it. You just keep walking with me, and I'm going to show you much glorious things before your very eyes. You'll see miraculous things, and not just outside of you, but in you. Amen. Because in you is the hope of glory. My son, Jesus Christ. Fully well knowing that I'm not in the flesh because he's a part of me. And I'm a part of him. We abide in one another. We live in one another. Doesn't matter what choices I make because I know that his grace is still upon me, no matter what. Amen. He loves me no matter what, and he's going to show me all these great things. He's going to show me such wonderful things about changing the way I think about things. It's nice to, to, to not feel so distracted from having lustful thoughts all the time, or, or hatred thoughts, or contentions. Or jealousy thoughts, knowing that it's under control because it's a fruity gate, self control. Mm -hmm. That's good. What else is there? Oh, there's a whole lot more. There's more to this fruit that he's given the fruit of the Spirit. Such a joy. We also got patience. How come is it that? that even a human themselves doesn't want to wait. Because all they want is right now. I want it right now because I can't wait and I want it now. Well, you're just going to have to wait. Well, I just I feel so impatient about it, but I want it right now. Well, it's not going to be ready for another 45 minutes. So you're going to have to wait. It's Burger King. I mean, you know, it's like it's an oven. It's cooking, right? And I mean, you know, I mean, I mean, it's just, but knowing that he provided that fruit for us of patience, <coughs> that we could walk in it. And know that we don't have a lack because he made us powerful because of himself. So I can be patient. I can be waiting. And know that I don't have to become aggressive. I can be calm and collect it. But how can I do that without making a choice? Yes, we make a choice in it. We get to choose whether we're going to be patient or not, right? But what's it got to do with the thoughts then? That's where we're stuck. Inside, we're all made brand new. We're all walking with the Lord. Well, here, I say the mind faith has to catch up with the heart faith, because the heart faith is so huge. So the more that I renew, the more that I start accepting, knowing that, oh, yes, Lord, I need to change this way of thinking, because you gave me the mind of Christ. And you gave me a foundation to work on top of, to build structure of the gospel. Knowing that this word is about the gospel. And that's the foundation that we get to build on. It's such a big, huge rock he is. My fortress, my strong, strong tower, hallelujah. Amen. But if I'm not focused on that, and I'm just focused on thinking that, oh, well, I've still got some lack here. Oh, I still got, I still got problems. I still got situations. Well, he didn't say that, you know, these things would just go away. These are things that we have to grow through. That we have to walk with him, live through it with him. I know that 
I love him because I have the Spirit of Christ. Amen. Same thing with you all. You all have the Spirit of Christ in you. Amen, we do. So you can't be separate from him. And within that, you know one thing is that your body is dead because of sin. But the Spirit in you is life because of righteousness. Amen. That's right. Come on. And that righteousness was paid in full with his own blood. That's right. And through that righteousness, you get to see more life. Amen. And paid in full. Amen. You get to have this more abundant type life. And to me, it's like totally exciting. And like, I get excited also about the word of God because I know the more I get in, the more he's going to change me. Amen. Because I know I couldn't change myself before I, before I even had a chance to get to know him. And before he gave me the gift to accept him. And next thing I know, it's like, wow, Lord, shoot, you changed my whole life around. You delivered me from all my learning disabilities. You delivered me from smoking cigarettes to, I mean, so many different things. And I'm thinking, wow, Lord, you changed my life around. Yeah. Even including my thought process mm -hmm. and the way I think about people. Mm -hmm. That's true. I mean, I, I used to manipulate people and deceive people to get whatever I wanted out of them. And all I had to do was just be kind and nice. I didn't have to be aggressive. I didn't have to be, you know, uh, just like car, you know, a lot of people use car salesmen because they're a little, you know, aggressive, you know, they want to get, they want to get their sell, they want, you know, they just want, 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 you know, because they're always looking for that sell, right? Well, I already know what damage it did to people for what I did. God said, you know what? I saved you, and I'm going to change your life in the 180. Instead of you manipulating and deceiving people, you're going to edify people. You're going to prophesy over people. You're not just going to do this and do that. You're going to do all things what I called you to do. You're going to heal people, whether it be emotionally, mentally, spiritually. You're going to do many things because he called each and every one. You won't find it anywhere else, except for where he is in you know, the hope of glory. And I thank him every day, and I am so in love with him because how much he first loved me. Amen. And it's the same for you. He first loved you. And he just wants more for you, yes, Lord. increasing and beyond measure. To keep yeah. renewing your mind. Because yeah. without that, we'll be just kind of like in a stuck rut. Like, okay, yeah, I believe. How can I give a defense for the hope that is in me if I don't study or I decided not to meditate in his word to renew my mind? The importance of knowing his word is to know more about him. And not just about what he's done, what he's going to do, what has happened in the past, but who he is, his character. Knowing, knowing all that, that that's a part of you all and myself. That he's ready to do more. He wants to take you beyond levels that you think that you'd ever best be even seen. So keep on hold of the glory of the hope that's given to you. That's right. And be ready to give a defense for the faith that is in you. Amen. With all gentleness. And through all of this walking with him and renewing our minds, he'll give life to our mortal bodies. Because he raised him from the dead. Yes, he did. Jesus spoke. You know, he was getting ready to raise Lazarus from the dead. 
He spoke one thing. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will never die. Amen. Really? Never die. Of course, he was talking in a spiritual sense. That's but right. I do also believe that he was talking about our mortal bodies and giving it life and with that resurrection power when he was speaking. To me, it's just amazing. He knew beforehand, he knew, he even knew beforehand when Paul decided to write the Romans letter. When he decided to say that he should write that, because it was so inspired by him that he knew that, yeah, this is right. Yeah, this is right right here. This is this is how we're gonna orchestrate this right here, so that way you know we can get the mindset all ready, and that way when something comes your way, you can just go over there and Stomp right on and be like, yep, I got faith. <laughs> and uh, you're going to move from here to there. And I'm not going to be distracted anymore. I have the mind of Christ. And I keep on growing in it. And I'm going to build more structure on my, on my foundation because I got this big, huge, four-story house building that I want to build. But I got to get more into that word of God to get it. So keep on being hungry. Amen. Keep on being thirsty. Don't stop. Amen. Keep eating. Keep drinking. Because you won't ever want to stop after that. That's right. <laughs> you always want more. Amen. Because it just tastes so good. He said, taste and see that the Lord is good. That's what he said. Well, I love tasting him. <laughs> I mean, I just, I just feel like I gotta go up all the time. But I tell you what, sometimes I just feel so full, like I'd sit right up here on the top of my gut right here, like, oh yeah, it feels good, Lord. But, but it's just so, and but knowing that after that, after filling up the, the just that food for my soul, and just knowing that afterwards, that the Holy Spirit's gonna take that. And do some great work. Amen. Amen. Some great work that will vast beyond your eyes. So I encourage you. Dig deeper. Amen. Don't stop. Amen. You can always start with just, you know, having some. Because before you know it, you'll be having a four-course meal. Amen. 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 All right. Well, Lord bless you and keep you. Thank you.